All right, all right. Moving on, we're going to say we're going to say Vicente Luque wins this fight. I like the decision lean because if anything Tyron Woodley has been extremely difficult to finish. Um, hasn't been knocked out since what Nate Marquardt way, way back in the day. So I yeah. think that decision lean is probably a good one. And I got to shout out my guy, Tom chambers. He gave me the rub there with my, uh, my round three sprinkles. Maybe that's the way I can live vicariously here. I get Tyrone Woodley round three, Vicente Luque round three. And then as long as someone goes down right at the end of the fight, I don't care who it is. Maybe that's the way to go. And I can get just a little taste of betting against Vicente Luque. <laughs> Cause I'm like an addict, man. I need it <laughs> all right it is main event time everybody we have 416 lab viewers thank you all so much for spending your monday night with us this evening me and my guy james lynch breaking down ufc 260 stipe miosic the undisputed greatest heavyweight of all time returns 20 and 3 welcoming the future king francis Ngannou, 15 and 3 Man, this rematch, it feels like it's just been hovering over us for years, James. What do you make of this one? It's another tough fight. Uh, this is another close one where I could see, you know, it going either way. I mean, we I, it's not much different than the first fight, in my opinion, where you've got Francis who can end a fight at any moment in the first round. We've seen that in the last couple of fights. Uh, you look at a guy like Yarazino Rosenstreich, who a couple of weeks ago went to a decision with Cyril Gaon. He gets finished in 20 seconds by Nagano. So it's interesting to see what happens. And Sipe is the guy that you keep counting out. He keeps winning, right? I mean... Lost to Cormier. I don't think a lot of people felt like he was going to beat Cormier in the rematch. He beats Cormier in a comeback win, right? Cormier was winning. He ended up coming back. And then the last fight, he ends up winning a decision decisively in that one. So, uh, yeah, Stipe can get it done. Uh, 38 years old, a little bit of a height and reach advantage in this one. This is what I'm kind of basing this fight on. I'm going to keep it a little bit simple in this one and not dig too deep into it. Obviously, Stipe won the first fight. Is I do wonder, a couple years later, that first fight was in 2018. This fight's in 2021. Stipe's been finished in between there. He got finished by Cormier. He's a little bit older. Francis switched some things up from that first fight. He's not with Fernand Lopez anymore. He's with Eric Nixick. We know Eric Nixick's a great coach. Look at Dan Ige a couple weeks ago with that win over Gavin Tucker. Um, you would hope the cardio issues are fixed. That was another issue that I think he learned from in his last fight. I think Francis takes this, and I know a lot of people are like, how on earth is he the favorite when Stipe isn't? Because Stipe's older. Stipe's, you know... He's, he's just like at some point the wheels have got to fall off at some point and i think this might be the fight here and i just think all francis needs to do in this fight is clip stipe and get it done i know that's easier said than done but i think even if it goes later i can't see francis making the same mistake like last time and gassing out against stipe and stipe is able to take over i would assume he's fixed that so i'm going francis naganu in this fight i i said this on my show this morning i would love stipe to win i think this guy's criminally underrated and obviously i'm underrating him here if i'm picking naganu in the fight but i think at some point that's got to end here and i know if you guys remember a couple of years ago uh back when uh so when jones beat daniel cormier and dana white said this as a presser i think people forget this when john jones beat daniel cormier at ufc 214 he was going to fight stipe in december a lot of people forget that but then Jones obviously got busted for steroids. He, he, that was pushed along, and then Stipe had to fight whoever, and you know everything sort of continued from there. But I do think in the back of the head, Stipe is like, I got to win this, and then I got to fight Jones, and then that's it. I know he's not has an indicated retirement, but I got to think that's in the back of his head. He doesn't want to take too much damage. He's a firefighter, or whatever. I, I think with Francis, he's got plenty of a career left, even though he's a couple of years younger than Stipe. But I don't know. I just feel like this time Francis gets it done. I'd love to be proven wrong, but... Because again, I like Stipe. I think he's probably the most underrated champion in, in the history of the sport. But I think Francis gets him this time, Clint. I'm curious your thoughts. So, James, I, I'm struggling on this one, man. I'm struggling. I bet on Stipe Miocic in his fight against Daniel Cormier. Like I said, we've got that line, there are no fairy tale endings in MMA. We use that against Daniel Cormier. I understand the greatness of of Stipe Miocic. I've done my very best over the couple of years to poke holes in this man's record. You know, you look back and he's just got an unchallengeable resume, right? But you go, Andre Arlovsky, ah, he was getting to the end of his career. He wasn't that great at that point. Fabrizio Overdoom, ah, he got over aggressive. He made some bad choices. He went kind of downhill from there. Alistar over him, ah, he's chinny now. He lost his chin. He's no good. Junior Dos Santos, he's a shell of himself. Ah, but you know what? Even though now, four, five, six years later, those guys are all washed and maybe out of the UFC, at the time, they weren't quite done yet. Yeah. And he still got those wins. And he still knocked all of them out. Like, we've got to respect what Stipe has done. But we also have to be realistic about the fact that 
MMA is a young man's game. Back in 2018, Stipe was able to weather the first round storm of Francis Ngannou. He was able to dig deep and force this thing into a grappling match and grind out a 25-minute session. But, man, that was three years ago. Yeah. Stipe's 38 now. Y'all know my rule. When it gets to 40, you better have a damn good reason to back him at 40 years old. Since that fight with Francis Ngannou, Stipe has been knocked out in the first round by Daniel Cormier and then taken as much damage and significant strikes as literally half of his illustrious UFC career. He's taken nearly 300 significant strikes in the past three fights alone. Now, I know Daniel Cormier is a future Hall of Famer. I know that guy has got hand speed. He's got power. He's the complete package. But the fact of the matter is Stipe has gone to war in his last three fights. Now he's got to take on the biggest power puncher we have ever seen. I mean, a guy with ungodly next-level power. And what we maybe forget, what I actually forgot until I dug back into this, James, is that Francis Ngannou really rode into that Stipe fight expecting to walk through the champ. Like, it it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to win that fight. He took it on short notice. He had no training camp for it. And do you remember he went to France? Like, the week of the fight? Yeah. He flew to France and did some media crap and came back. The dude had no gas tank in that fight, more so than we've ever seen him, because he wasn't training. Like, he was being he was being given the gold medal before he ever stepped in the cage and was doing podcasts and shows. And t- he wasn't in the gym for any of it. And he had just come off of a fight. Like... That's a, that's a bad, bad way to try to take the title. And if you've done anything on social media, you've seen nothing but gym photos of Francis Ngannou. And you know what you've seen is a lot of body weight stuff. I know this again. I might be getting my tinfoil cap out here, James. No, you're right. But I think, right. I think he's put a lot of effort into that gas tank. He's doing all kinds of body weight exercises, medicine ball exercises, high repetition stuff. His gas tank, I think, is going to be something different than what we have ever seen come Saturday. And we don't have to really worry about Francis getting knocked out because he's nothing but durable. Now, I say that, watch, Stipe's going to knock him out in the first round or something stupid. But... We don't have to worry about much of anything with Francis except that gas tank, right? Like, you've got to think that Stipe is looking to recreate the last fight here because what other path does he really have? If he goes to war and he stands his foot in the ground and goes toe-to-toe, you know, sticks in the center of the cage with Ngannou, no one wins that fight. Nobody wins that fight. Stipe's got to rely on his speed, his head movement, and his wrestling to get through this thing. And I don't think a 38-year-old version of Stipe, who's taken a ton of punishment, who's more hittable than he's ever been, who's slower than he's ever been, is going to be able to do that against Francis Ngannou. I've said for the last three years, ever since the first fight happened, that when these guys rematch, Stipe is going down. Francis Ngannou will win the rematch, and we see, and this isn't just my opinion, but in MMA, James, when fighters rematch, the younger fighter wins. It, it's something at like an 85% clip, a 90% clip, something crazy like that, that the younger fighter wins rematches in MMA fights. And I don't see much of a path for Stipe here beyond what we saw in the last fight, and that's a tall order if Francis has his gas tank in check. I don't like Francis being the favorite. That's something I've been on record saying a lot is that it feels disrespectful when a current sitting champion is the underdog to a challenger. Uh, We saw that, what, with uh, Peter Jan and Aljo Sterling, right? And Jan Blakovich and Israel Adesanya. Exactly. You go anytime the champion, anytime the champion gets put as the underdog, alarm bells start going off because that means the underdog, or not the underdog, but well, the should be underdog, the challenger is overhyped. Coming into that fight, the champion deserves some respect. So from a betting standpoint, I don't like that Francis is the favorite. But what I can tell you that I do like, Francis opened up at minus 225. 
It's been nothing but steep a money driving this fight down to a pick em. And this is one of my favorite spots, James. I know everybody mocks me and everyone gets on me. I sometimes talk bat shit crazy. I sometimes have some of the hottest takes on the internet today. But I love planting my flag. I love going against the grain. And I don't want Francis at minus 225. I don't want Francis at minus 175. Francis at minus 115? That sounds like a bet that I could make. So I think I'm going to pick Francis to be the champion that I've always claimed he would be and new come Saturday. And I think I'm going to pull that trigger, man. If I get that minus 120, that minus 115 on Francis and Ganu, I think I'm headed to the window. Naganu by TKO as well as plus 105, Clint. I don't know if you saw that too. <laughs> you know, that's, I that, get that. that. That's a little tempting too. I mean, you know, you could maybe do both, right? You could just do that and then maybe take a little sprinkle on the knockout prop. I mean, it's just crazy that, like, think about that for just one second here. Francis Naganu, probably the hardest hitter in the UFC by far, like in terms of power. It's plus money to get him by knockout. And I know it's Stipe, and I know I'm sure, like, I could just see us coming back here on Monday and Stipe gets the, you know, the win or something, and I just look like an idiot. But it is kind of crazy that that's plus money, is it not? Yeah, yeah. I if mean, that's, think that's, that's what he does. Out, Curtis Blades, like, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just sort of look at that. One other thing I forgot to mention as well that I do think is a key thing about the camp switch up for this fight, right? Because he's been at Extreme Couture for a couple of years now. Look who he's getting to train with. Roy Nelson, Tim Johnson, who's in uh, Bellator, um, Vinny Magalesh. Like, he has bodies in the gym that he gets to work with. Stipe is working with Alexa Kammer. And Jeff Hughes, I don't even know. I think Jeff Hughes might have retired, to be honest. He's out of the UFC. Like, who's he working with? That's got to, at some point, catch up to him. At some point, you would think. Right? So that's another reason to like Francis in this fight. Anyway, that's, that, that's all. That's a very valid point. I mean, Francis, uh, he for a long time there in his career, he had that big fish little pond thing going on where he was just such a freak of nature. It didn't matter where he trained or who he trained with. He just hit people hard enough they fell over. Now he's at a good gym. Now he's got good coaches. Now he's got big bodies. He's got good training partners. I'm expecting improvements from Francis Ngannou, especially in the gas tank, and I think that's probably the most important factor here for him. And let's be real. You go back and you watch that fight, man. Stipe had nothing left to give. Like It took everything he had to wrestle Francis Ngannou for 25 minutes. If Francis Ngannou's cardio or de- takedown defense is just ever so slightly better, he's going to be extremely favorable in this spot and just one punch from Francis Ngannou. And I think Stipe really only got hit with like two or three of them. His face was already like welted up there in that first round. If he hits clean just once, it's over. And now he's three years older. He's taken a ton more damage. I got to go with the younger fighter. I got to go with the challenger. Francis Ngannou and new baby. I'm in. I'm in. Let's do it. (laughs) 